the oldest flight attendant in the world is 86 years old and she's still working as a flight attendant. One of our stories. More stories are uh, lounges are opening again in Doha, three if you count them. Maybe it's better, maybe it's worse, maybe I think it's better. It's always better to have the lounges. Uh, Lufthansa pilots are not planning to strike at least this summer. KLM is cancelling flights. British Airways is cancelling flights. And um, Airbus sales for June. My name is Lars. I'm here for, to bring you more miles, more points, more status. So do not forget to subscribe or hit the notification button because you do not want to miss any news regarding aviation and miles, points and status. Yes, your daily dose. Comments and leave us a like. Comments are important for the interaction that I know what you think about what we are sending or making for you. The first topic, ETA Airways. This is the weekend where everything will be decided. Of course, it's uh, July, <laughs> but um, who cares if they wanted to give us the decision in June. It's kind of June, only differently written, kind of. But anyways, the, the Italian government was not happy with the money which was offered for ETA. And uh, Lufthansa was offering before 1.2 to 1.4 billion euros. And they said, ah, when you see the market and when you see everything is going down south, the war in uh, Ukraine, uh, we reduce it. Um, for 80% we pay only 800 to 850 million. And um, the, of the people from Lufthansa did give the paperwork to the government on the 5th of July. So the government had enough time to decide on it. But now it should go very fast and very smooth, hopefully that a Lufthansa or anyone is getting this piece of aviation. Yeah, is it history? I don't know, but um, ETA is a new airline. Even they have the DNA from Alitalia. But uh, let us see how it works. And uh, unfortunately, they will not tell us how they decide today or tomorrow. Uh, that will be done on Monday. The, is it President, Prime Minister, German word would be Minister President of Italy. Um, is doing that like uh, Corriere Sera said and uh, Alfredo Altavilla said already to the newspaper uh, Corriere della Sera that is a project where we have all a win or everybody is winning and um, we will see if everybody will be a winner or not. Airbus is clearly a winner. What is striking of the uh, new sales of uh, Airbus is that they have seven A350 cargo sold, but they don't tell us who bought it. Um, Airbus anyway sold uh, 70 A jets. Uh, actually, they have orders for it, which doesn't mean that they are sold because we see that we have cancellation as well. And um, one not named Private customer bought uh, a A220-100 and an A319neo, both in the ACJ, which are private jets. I don't know if it's the same customer, but can be that it's two different customers. And isn't it nice to buy your own jet this size? I like it. Uh, anyways, Delta Airlines uh, ordered uh, 330 IAG ordered five uh, A320-neos and one A321-neo. Qantas has ordered 20 A2-2300s, 20 A321-NEOs and 12 A350s-1000 they uh, ordered as well. But the orders of the A350 are the most impressive order. Why? Because they had 22 orders for this new cargo plane. And um, now Silkwest Airlines is getting two more and one customer who is not mentioned by name, I say it again, and it must be a, a bigger customer. Um, let me tell you why. Um, who is ordering seven cargo planes? They have to have a certain size because you cannot put up operation with seven aircraft just from zero to seven. And one customer who could be possibly ordering that would be Cargo Lux. Cargo Lux is just having 747 cargo fleet, but 747s 400 are getting old, yes. And uh, for that they have to replace um, those aircrafts. And um, 
That would be a reason why they are a little bit more shy about saying, hey, we are the ones who bought it. Maybe we will get the name sooner or later, but latest when they are painted in the colors of the airline, then we will know it. Now it came to the moment, uh, what I told you before, that uh, aircraft uh, manufacturers have cancellations as well. They had to cancel uh, six A321 three, three Neos, two 350 900 uh, for some customers, unfortunately. Then they canceled uh, 351,000 for Qatar Airways. And now Airbus has 442 orders in total, 183 cancellations and has a plus of 259 aircrafts in the book. But like I said, the 351,000 was uh, the fourth A350-1000, which was canceled. But what we have to mention here is that is the only one which got canceled by Airbus themselves. The others are canceled by clients. Yeah? Um, but this one was canceled by Airbus for the client and not mm, a small client, but we will see. Um, then the deliveries were interesting as well. In June, 60 uh, planes were delivered to 35 customers. And from the beginning of the year, they had 297 deliveries for 60 customers. Interesting and uh, looks like they are getting their game together, not like uh, Boeing, which I talked yesterday about. A lot of you are interested, of course, in cabin crews. And they say sometimes, hey, yeah, um, we have here an age. Uh, uh, average in cabin crew, which is too high. But hey, uh, when it comes to Betty Nash, who became a flight attendant in 1957, yeah, she's now working 65 years for one airline. Actually, it's not one because she started somewhere else, then she ended up, but that came to all the mergers. And so she was just going through. Um, and she has now yeah, she has her own Guinness Book record. Um, she is the longest active flight attendant of the world. And uh, she's still flying American Airlines on the route Washington, New York, Boston. Um, when she had to get the money for the flights in cash, <laughs> that was a good old times when you came to the aircraft and paid cash for you. We should do that nowadays as well, then we don't have problems with the refund. Um, so that was $12 when she started, 12. Can you imagine? In the story of, uh, uh, of ABC, where she told her story, $12, I mean, excuse me. Um, and then um, because of her seniority, she could uh, always, be, always be in the evening at home to take care of her uh, disabled son and, uh, or special needs son, I think that is a proper word in English, sorry for... <laughs> The other word, and um, that is something um, which is the only benefit she has. The other thing she has to do, she has to go to crow training, she has to do the recurrence, she has to be active and show that she's able to do in the case of the unlikely event everything. But I would not know if she would sit in the exit row, if she would be reseated. I don't know, but who knows. <laughs> Um, anyways, when she started in 1957, um, she gave on the route Washington, New York, which I guess can still not believe it, $12. Can you imagine? $12. Um, when the meal service was through, they had to hand out cigarettes and matches. Yeah, that is uh, absolutely. And uh, when she was starting to work, it was really hard to get a cabin crew because she had to uh, go to weight management and they had to, to check always the weight and if they were not uh, properly um, in their opinion, they could get fired easily. But when she started working, she didn't start working for American Airlines, she started for Eastern Airlines. Some of you remember Eastern Airlines and uh, due to some mergers, she ended up in American Airlines. And basically it's one company because um, she got bought always into the next airline. And the other prop topic is, which is in my opinion important as well, Normally people work four years on average in the US in one company and she did 65 years. People are less time in jail huh, for murder. So anyways, um, interesting comment. Frankfurt Airport, yesterday was a day where there was no message. Uh, why? Because Lufthansa had a reduced uh, offering and uh, there were no disturbances for the uh, airport. And that is a good message. Of course, Lufthansa had 122 flights uh, canceled 
and uh, 1,270 takeoffs and landing were planned. That was what uh, Fraport said. But of course, the most cancellations came from Lufthansa and that are as part of the uh, 770 flights which are going to be um, used as repositioning flights or cancellation. You know, I told about it from between the 8th of July and 14th of July. Uh, that is part of the 3,200 flights which Lufthansa is cancelling, 3,100, but they are still cancelling more, so that is something. Oh, for tomorrow, a little uh, spoiler, we will tomorrow have uh, Lufthansa Group update. The Lufthansa Group update itself uh, will be interesting as well as we got a video from one of our viewers uh, from an internal video of Lufthansa Group. And um, there is the CEO of Lufthansa, uh, Mr. Ritter, talking. And um, there are some interesting insights, in my opinion. Anyways, um, that is a good news that uh, Lufthansa has not um, given up. They are trying to get the service back to normal. One other thing which I mentioned always as well is the strike possibility, the so-called PPV contract. The PPV contract is um, a contract that Lufthansa promises to have 325 aircrafts, um, shorter aircrafts um, in the main line. And this was cancelled and uh, as they cancelled it, the union is now ready to go on strike since 1st of July, basically by law. They didn't ask inside the, the union if the pilots want to go on strikes or not, so they have not done that. And there have been a couple of talks, but of course Lufthansa and the union have different views on the situation. And um, Carsten Spohr said, of course, hmm, cancelling the contract, the PPV contract with 325 aircrafts is, was not so smart, let's say it that way, and um, that it was a mistake. Uh, now he said we can get a solution if we meet between 250 and 325. I mean, 325 was the old contract, why you just not do the old contract, resign it and happy. Um, we should get back to that, that people honor contracts. I mean, that is not, I mean, it's... Uh, Pacta uh, sunt savanda, if you speak Latin, uh, contracts have to be served, that is what it is. Unfortunately, I don't think that uh, this management mistakes uh, should be um, put other people to suffer except the management. But one reason why the um, pilot union is not going on strike is because they want to uh, not make us as passengers more suffer. In the summer anyways are we suffering already and they want to put the finger on the management and say, Everything which happened now, it's not our fault. We are doing our job. It's you, management. That is a kind of a smart way, in my opinion, to do it that way. Another way, which is maybe not so smart or less smart, is um, KLM. KLM cancels additional 1,000 European flights and uh, they restrict the ticket sales. Of course, they re restrict the ticket sales and there's an announcement. The announcement said that KLM, the Royal Dutch Airline, will take various measures, some supplementing existing measures, to ensure that customers who book a flight with KLM get their summer holiday off to a good start despite persistent operational changes at Amsterdam Schiphol Airport due to the shortage of airport security. The measures will take effect from today through 28th of August. So it's a long op uh, operation and they say they will cancel between 10 and 20 flights to European destinations every day. Um, then they will restrict the sales of seats on KLM and City Hopper uh, flights uh, to European destinations. This uh, will free up space for customers who are rebooked like Lufthansa did for their flights, so that there is a possibility to get away. And um, they want to inform us in a timely manner, whatever timely manner is, maybe for them timely manner is 10, before, 10 minutes before departure, I don't know, maybe they uh, can tell us a little bit more. And another thing is that measures relating to air freight will remain in place until the end of summer, summer schedule, and this is uh, that they will also close the belly compartment for loose packages and mailbags aboard flights bound for intercontinental destinations. This loose or bulk freight will be placed in containers which will be brought in via the apron, making them easier to load. Of course, that is a problem. When you have no loadies, then you have really a problem. And the airport of Amsterdam, of course, uh, did some restrictions. They um, want to restrict the flight movements and, of course, the passengers who can 
access the terminal. You saw the pictures from the queue in Amsterdam, which I had in one of my videos. Um, anyways, it makes sense for KLM to stop and uh, to stop selling the tickets. Of course, it makes sense because it makes free space for us to get somewhere. Because I mean, where's the sense? You get your flight canceled, and you have for a couple of days no chance to get away because there are no flights available. Everything is full for you. Are standing there. Uh, um, at the gate and hoping that somebody takes you. I mean, that is no fun in there. And the next one is British Airways. British Airways is canceling as well 10,000 plus X flights and uh, between August and October. So that is something um, which comes, of course, not uh, as a surprise. British Airways has a lot of problems, but what happened as well is that the whole aviation industry is facing, of course, significant challenges and has to, um, yeah, they have to focus on resilience. They have to put their whole operation back in order that the customers get the service that they deserve. And um, then there's an announcement from the um, government that uh, the amnesty deadline set by the Department for Transport allowing carriers to hand back airport slots without penalty in hopes of, of reducing chaos and disruption, yeah. And um, we see that, but we have to uh, reduce flights with multiple frequencies, ju just uh, like Nice, Dublin, Amsterdam. Passengers will be informed. Of course, I hope to be informed. Um, Ryan is not happy because they have not this problem. They are not facing the problems. They are not having the trouble, but that is what it is. Um, what is your opinion about it? Is it, in your opinion, great that um, they are doing it or you say, hmm, somehow they should have found a better solution. I mean, I think that is the only thing they can do if they are responsible. Last topic, and uh, then we are done. We are already um, a little bit on the long side. Um, three dazzling new lounges opening their doors to passengers just in time for each holiday. That is what Qatar Airways is telling us. It unveils the gold silver and of course platinum lounge at its award-winning hub, Hamad Airport in Doha. They are inviting privileged club loyalty members and One World Alliance card holders to access a dedicated lounge corresponding to their frequent flyer status when transiting through Doha. And as you remember, when you're having an Emerald status uh, in Doha, it was not always fun. I mean, I like the teddy bear thingy in the middle of the yellow thing. And then when you walked up into the Emerald Lounge or you had to go into the Sapphire, <sighs> difficult when it comes to service. But now they're talking that they have state-of-the-art lounge facilities with stunning tarmac views will provide a peaceful heaven to Qatar Airways Platinum Gold and Silver loyalty members and One World Emerald and Sapphire card holders. The brand new facility will offer new spaces where passengers can rest, unwind, and enjoy some of Qatar Airways' renowned re amenity product from uh, Dipti Kuh and indulge in international cuisine and white beverage selection. That is what we expect. Qatar Airways Group Chief Executive, His Excellency Mr. Akbar Al Barka, said, It is my pleasure to announce the opening of three premium frequent flyer program lounges at Hamad International Airport and just in time for the peak eat holiday. Our latest platinum, gold and silver lounges demonstrate the airline's commitment to rewarding Clearage Club and One World Alliance members with coveted benefits that benefit the service quality of, um, of course, Qatar Airways, it's synonymous for. We look forward to welcoming passengers to experience our sophisticated, modern and spacious lounges when transiting too. Yeah, then there are three lounges. And in my opinion, when you see that in all lounges, there's only 420 passengers who fit, can be a little bit challenging because when you see that they are operating so many flights that could be not enough. There are so many times when the lounges were too full. And I hope, of course, that the Emirate Lounge um, or Platinum Lounge will be better. I hope so as well. I hope that you subscribe to our channel. I hope that you leave us a like. I hope that you hit the notification button, the bell, and um, comment, comment, comment. Thank you for doing so. Seeing you tomorrow for Frequent Traveler TV takeoff and for our special Lufthansa Group update. Thank you so much. See you tomorrow. Bye.